Hi everyone, greetings from National Skills Network. And some of you might be aware that uh, we regularly update you and publish on new initiatives uh, that are taking place in our country in the exciting space of industry integrated higher education, upskilling and many related areas. And one such recent update was so interesting that uh, we thought we should learn more about it. And this is coming from two very legendary organizations in India. One of them happens to be Bajaj Auto Limited and the other one is Banastali Vidya Peet. So when an industry and an academia come together, you can see miracles happen, right? I'm talking about the partnership which just happened between these two organizations. One is, of course, the corporate and the other one is the academic. Uh, so we thought, let's learn more about what is the initiative, how it's going to benefit the students, the learners, particularly it's about girls. So it's more interesting to know how girls are going to get benefited with this skilling initiative. Uh, so I'm very glad to introduce you to uh, Dr. Anshuman Shastri, who is the director, Banasthali Vidya Peet, and Mr. Sudhakar Gudipati, who is the vice president, CSR at Bajaj Auto. So welcome to this uh, conversation. I'm so glad I could uh, get your time and uh, also the curiosity to learn more is always there. As I was just mentioning, uh, the best program which is launched recently, that is the Bajaj Engineering Skills Training Program, is so interesting that uh, we would like to know more by asking few questions to both of you. But before that, I thought, uh, let us understand about how you perceive this entire big picture scenario today, where we are talking about employability of engineering graduates and uh, especially women, girl students, you know, who uh, with a lot of difficulty in many places try to complete an engineering program or they may, they may even drop out of it for various reasons. And uh, helping them get a suitable job is a very big challenge. And I think there is also a skill gap here, which is generally identified. So uh, what is your idea about, uh, you know, the empowerment of such girls with the right skills and helping them enter the industry, uh, especially industries like manufacturing, uh, you know, which are evolving so fast. We tend to produce uh, the engineering graduates from a country, which kind of uh, match the, um, the population of some countries across the world, some quite uh, significant ones, yet as a country, we have not uh, been able to come at par with the fact uh, that we should be creating uh, employment at the same rate as well. So as a result, a lot of our uh, graduates, they tend to suffer from uh, a massive knowledge gap mm -hmm. or predominantly uh, containing just uh, the theoretical aspect of the knowledge required and expected from various industries. So the industry is always uh, raise this issue of having a gap in their expectations and uh, the delivery that academia is doing. So overall, the project seems to have its own uh, its own uniqueness in the fact that we are trying to address uh, a problem that is of significant national interest. Mm -hmm. And uh, over the past few years, uh, a lot of interest has also been given towards the, the scaling domain. Right. Yeah. So that's really interesting to know that, uh, you know, you have taken up this uh, issue, which is, as you said, it's also a big development issue in India, where we find the skill gap and uh, low employability of people who do these courses. So it would also be interesting, interesting to learn more from the industry perspective, like, uh, like say, uh, Sudhakar, the initiative which is taken up by Bajaj Auto, uh, maybe you can give us the backdrop to this and how it has uh, been a part of your CSR initiatives to take up such programs. And uh, you have very aptly named it as BEST. So I guess we are going to, you know, uh, churn out the best of the best through these programs. <laughs> Thank you, Madhuri. Uh, as you know that Bajaj Group has been uh, doing CSR initiatives and charitable activities uh, for many decades. Yeah. Um, one of the important aspects of CSR is to you know empower youth. Mm. Um, from that perspective, now we have chosen skill development as one of the largest key thematic area. 
uh, in skill development uh, the best choice for bajaj to really um, you know focus is into engineering skilling primarily for a reason right as a corporate we not only want to uh, you know pick up initiatives and fund them or support them with our resources but also use our expertise mm. uh, because bajaj is known for its manufacturing practices and engineering excellence across the globe we thought we should you know get our uh, engineers and as well as senior leadership to craft a program along with banasthali uh, to come up with best initiative uh, the reason why it is called best because it is a engineering skilling the bajaj engineering skills training and as you know more than 12 million youth enter workforce every year but the question remains are they industry ready hmm. particularly in a in a, a sector like manufacturing where there's so much of advancement happen in terms of the technology and gone are those days where there is a lot of manual labor work uh, there's so much of technology used in the factories in nowadays but the students in the engineering colleges or diploma colleges do not have that kind of exposure uh, to get hands on skilling in this mm -hmm. uh, both contemporary as well as the new technologies our idea was to bridge this gap between academia and industry that's how we decided to you know look at some of the very critical topics or modules uh, which will help in terms of bridging this gap and we defined the best program and it is going to be offered to both engineering students and as well as the diploma students okay that's really nice to know that uh, you know you have uh, identified this very grave problem that we are facing with uh, employability of engineers uh, but the other side of the story is also you know having the right infrastructure of course like you said bajaj csr is not just limited to funding but you take an active part so it would be nice to know also from dr anshuman about how banasthali vidyapeet is offering a certain kind of infrastructure in collaboration with bajaj how is it going to help the students let's say with practicals and all because i was also reading about the program you have courses uh, in latest manufacturing which is industry 4.0 so what is your plan what is the road map for the practical part of training especially well uh, our uh, association with bajaj uh, in this regard mm. is uh, not a very recent one like if we talk of the direct relation that we have it uh, goes back several generations in fact uh, our relation uh, goes back to on honorable general al bajaj ji who was a very good uh, friend of our founder pandit uh, hiralal shastri ji so even in uh, the generations after that we continued our relation and uh, in uh, 2013 we had uh, our school of legal studies followed by uh, the bajaj school of automation where uh, uh, training on industry ready um, automation kits and robots and uh, mechatronic systems was delivered to students so academically we were uh, very well equipped already with the uh, the partnership with bajaj then uh, we went a step ahead and uh, started expanding our, uh, our partnership to an extent where uh, we were not uh, just an entity that was uh, given a csr and which delivered a project on its own so from day one we have been uh, a partner a driving university in this uh, in regular discussions and partnerships and association with bajaj in terms of how the curriculum is to be designed what sort of modules to be taught we went to various uh, uh, skilling centers to see and identify the gaps that are available we have uh, been discussing about uh, the way the curriculum is going to be delivered what what sort of pedagogy we are going to implement how the faculty training is to take place so the association at every possible level if you ask me even uh, going to the details such as uh, how the batch rotation is going to be what kind of students are we expecting what regions what sort of an employment opportunity we are going to provide them mm -hmm. so i think the uh, collaborative effort has uh, 
left no stone unturned in the way we could plan this project and uh, i'm quite excited for uh, us to uh, at first see the project uh, go live and then to see the rewards that uh, the graduates and the diploma holders are going to get out yeah yeah it's actually quite exciting to know more as you just told us about the legendary part of this entire partnership and we are quite sure this is going to unfold in a very big way and help uh, many women and i mean girl students and uh, banasali vidyapeet uh, being you know such a remarkable place with such a lot of history and being the largest uh, women's university which is residential so i think all these aspects also add to the program right it's not just a small program which is just offered so besides infrastructure the facilities and the culture uh, so all these are i think uh, value additions there so uh, sudhakar in this uh, context now uh, if, because you also uh, have this uh, uh, you know the road map of connecting with many more institutions of higher learning i mean higher uh, education institutions uh, in terms of uh, you know helping them with engineering skills so would you see this as this one initiative as probably the center of excellence or something that's going to set standards for your future uh, endeavors absolutely uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, before i address that madhuri i do want to touch upon uh, the kind of uh, intervention which we have created hmm. which is uh, very unique um, in the country Uh, the reason why i'm saying it's unique um, i have worked with um, hundreds of universities and engineering colleges and um, i have seen <clears throat> uh, various skilling initiatives uh, across the country i think one of the biggest challenges which uh, we see is the uh, kind of a equipment or you know the machines which are used in the industry they are not available in the uh university campuses or engineering colleges campuses we felt that it is important for us to make sure that all the engineers who are uh, completing their degree and as well as the diploma holders get hands on experience in this equipment in the campus mm. that is where we identified when we worked out the curriculum uh in discussion with banasthali uh, we identified the top notch um you know the vendors or equipment um you know the players who can actually provide the equipment uh, we tied up with them hmm. a lot of global companies uh, are also in partnership with us um and we signed up with them and we are purchasing this equipment from these global players and making it available in the university and as well as the engineering colleges campuses uh when we set up this infrastructure um there are four modules uh, we primarily we are focusing on one is a mechatronics mm. second is motion control and sensor technology third is a robotics and automation and fourth is a industry 4.0 on smart manufacturing mm. all these four modules um and almost to the tune of 160 plus equipment is being set up this infrastructure is going to be available in the campuses like panastali uh primarily for the students who are coming from tier 2 and tier 3 uh cities or institutions mm. uh, who may not have got any sort of a hands on experience in their own degree colleges and diploma colleges okay the model now we are working with banasthali if i have to answer your question uh, the idea was this only that's why the first batch is being launched at banasthali mm. the idea is to pilot this and learn from this pilot and um, expand it in other places as well we've already signed up with couple of more universities and we're going to expand this to 10 best centers uh, including banasthali but i think uh, the batch which we are going to run in banasthali is going to give us lot of learnings uh, mm-hmm. to you know make sure that we do not repeat a, any of the challenges which we face here and also make sure those learnings are applied so obviously i think uh, this is a very very key initiative yeah. and important for us to successfully uh, you know run yeah 
Yeah, and also you were mentioning uh, specifically about the need for practical training, right? With the right infrastructure, uh, all the tools, the machinery and the technology. I think that's something very critical because uh, that's what I think gives that unique advantage to the students when they enter the industry. Otherwise, from the curriculum to the industry, there is a huge gap. And I think this program is going to fill that. Uh, so apart from this, uh, maybe uh, Dr. Anshuman, you can tell us a little more about uh, what is your plan to roll out the program? Uh, I mean, is it already uh, there for the students to enroll now? They can uh, log in and, uh, you know, register and uh, send in their applications or how do you see this happening in the next two to three months? Well, yes, I think the program is uh, all set to go live. Hmm. The although like I would like to add up to the answer Sudhakar sir gave just now, he was uh, being absolutely generous in mentioning some facts out. Uh, the fact he mentioned about vendors, so uh, total of about twenty vendors have uh, been uh, put together, and uh, all that equipment, all that machinery is uh, uh, being delivered to the institute. We have received all the machinery, all the equipment that uh, the program and the industries they required they actually used in fact and uh, the uh, the program is all set to go live the students the prospective students they can uh, go onto the website and uh, enroll for that particular course and uh, based on their eligibility they'll uh, they then be called up for this for signing up for this particular program so we be, uh, us being uh, a women's institute, we would only be catering uh, girls at our campus, which in itself is uh, uh, a different story altogether because uh, when we were doing our research uh, for scaling programs, us time pe maine dekha ki humne dhoonne ki koshish ki kuch women centric girl uh, skill center ke mil jaye. So, गूगल इमेजेस पे भी जब सर्च किया कि वुमेन स्किल सेंटर तो पहली जो उसकी फोटो आई थी वो थी कुछ महिलाएं मिलके सिलाई कढ़ाई कर रही हैं कुछ वो मेहंदी का काम कर रही हैं कुछ वहाँ पे अंधाक्षरी खेल रही हैं तो ये कुछ एरियाज में तो ये वाकई उनके लिए मददगार है पर हम महिलाओं को सिर्फ इतने छोटे से क्षेत्र में उनको कन्फाइन क्यों करें वाई शुड दे बी गिवन दी अपॉर्चुनिटी कि वो किसी बड़ी इंडस्ट्री में जाके वही काम जो पुरुष भी कर रहे हैं और साथ के साथ वो काम भी वो लोग करें हम कुछ सेंटर्स में घूमने गए थे तो वहां पे जो रेशो था वो ऑलमोस्ट टेन टू वन का रेशो था महिलाएं बहुत कम थी वहां पर संख्या में उसके अलावा उनको स्किल भी वही सिखाए जाते थे कि जो कि बहुत छोटे से बहुत लघु जिसे कहते हैं उद्योग छोटे सेक्टर में उनको ज्यादा फायदा कर सकता था तो अब उनके लिए तो ये भी बहुत बड़ी बात थी कि परिवार से निकल के आके ये काम सीख पा रहे हैं लेकिन हम उनको किसी भी लेवल पर रिस्ट्रिक्ट क्यों करें तो इसलिए हमने शुरू से ही ये विचार रखा कि क्योंकि बनस्ली में भी Uh, 1935 से हम लगातार महिलाओं को आगे बढ़ाने की बात करते हैं तुम स्किल में पीछे क्यों रहे हम कोई भी ऐसे स्किल में ऐसा कोई फिल्टर लगाए ही क्यों कि ये लड़कियां कर सकती हैं नहीं कर सकती हम तो ये करके दिखाएं यहाँ पे कि वो क्या कर सकती हैं और उसके बियॉन्ड भी कितना आगे तक जा सकती है तो दिस पार्टनरशिप विद बजाज वी आर थिंकिंग बनस्तली बजाज एंड वे बियॉन्ड दैट वी वॉन्ट टू Uh, create a benchmark center we want to establish uh, uh, a model for uh, not just uh, other other best centers but for the whole country to adopt yeah that's really very heartening to hear the story you just told us and it's very motivational i'm sure for all the girls and women who are going to watch this because uh, as you said very rightly these are all self imposed limits you know the glass wall that we see and all exactly exactly broken now and i'm sure women in manufacturing would be a bigger number when they go through courses like this and you also spoke about uh, the 
the need for gender balance right in the manufacturing and related industries that's absolutely very very relevant today so it's so glad to hear that this initiative is also going to address those things uh, in the industry so uh, for all the girls i'm sure this is going to be very exciting so and also since it's skill based and today we are talking about skills and not degrees alone that's going to help you in on life I'm sure this is a very uh, important and useful kind of a program to explore and pro probably register. So, uh, Sudhakar, uh, could you please add to this vision of, uh, you know, women empowerment in a way through programs like this? Absolutely. Um, I think the issue of uh, women workforce or, you know, women in uh, work uh, environment or work, uh, work uh, levels is itself is a big challenge. Right. Uh, now we have taken up a much more, you know, tougher challenge of actually training women in the uh, engineering space. Um, but I think the best one to collaborate is Banastali because they have almost close to, you know, 18,000 women or, you know, girls and women in a single campus. Um, I, I think even in our Bajaj, uh, we strongly believe that uh, whatever programs which we are running in CSR, um, there should be a large participation of uh, women in that. And uh, for that matter, few of our, uh, you know, plants also have some sections fully operated by women. Mm. So as a group, we always believed in uh, encouraging women and to, you know, take up uh, the jobs and empower themselves to you know uh, live a happy life um, so that that's a whole intent and i'm glad that while we are going to launch this across the country and our first batch is going to be 100% women uh, batch with panasli yeah yeah so uh, maybe we can also uh, let our audience know a bit more about the program like uh, what could be like the fee structure is there any scope for getting any scholarship or what would be the duration and uh, who are the likely the audience i mean the likely uh, student profiles for this like you mentioned the graduate engineers and also the diploma holders perhaps so probably a few more details on this could be good before we wrap up this conversation so uh, primarily when we def uh, come up with the CSR initiative and when we collaborated with Banastali, uh, the idea was that the top NIR of 100 universities like Banastali, uh, they have a brand which is already available and their students primarily get picked up in sixth and seventh semester itself. Mm. But there is a huge gap in other engineering colleges and as well as diploma colleges uh, who are in tier two cities and tier three cities, even tier four cities. So we said that I think if we can go to those colleges and get the students to enroll into the program, yeah. uh, particularly focusing on economically weaker section students, that would really be a huge impact um, under our CSR initiative. So that's the target audience which we are looking at. And there are two programs. One is a graduate training engineers, which is going to be a six months program. Um, and there is a, a DTE, which is a diploma training engineering program, which is going to be for four months. And 70% of this program is going to be uh, focused towards the hands-on practicals. Um, and we it is going to be a fully residential program. So now I will request Dr. Anshuman to talk about the fee structure and the type of students in graduate engineering and as well as diploma engineering can apply for this program. Sure. So the students who are eligible to apply for these programs, especially starting with the graduate programs, we are going to have students who have done their graduation in any engineering domain, specifically in electronics, mechanics, mechatronics, uh, communications, or uh, electrical engineering, some anything uh, allied domain, any of these allied domains, or anything equivalent. Whereas uh, in diploma, the uh, Polytech holder candidates uh, in similar domains would be eligible to apply for those courses, or candidates who are having uh, similar degrees. Now, looking at the fee structure, we have a uh, 
tried to keep uh, the fee structure as uh, nominal as possible. The fee structure is uh, at the lowest level of uh, the, the, the fee hierarchy we have at a university. Because at Banasli, we have always believed that the education should not be beyond the, beyond the reach of uh, the needy candidate. So we have uh, kept the fees at a very nominal level. And uh, to add uh, into it, uh, we are going to have uh, uh, Bajaj sponsorship available for uh, select candidates as well. So up to 80% scholarship can be available for... Uh, all the candidates who are uh, eligible for scholarships. So candidates from economy weaker section who uh, are in need of a scholarship would be given uh, uh, up to 80% scholarship on a need come merit basis. So the fee structure is quite nominal. There are going to be very few charges and the fee would uh, take care of the training and the facilities, the accommodation, lodging and boarding as well. And uh, it will be an all-inclusive cost, which uh, would take care of all their aspects of uh, being at Banasli. Okay. Now, being at Banasli uh, also means that they would be able to take part in uh, a lot of activities that take place uh, at our campus as well. Mm -hmm. Because Banasli, since its inception, is known uh, for its uh, holistic education model. And uh, even though these candidates are going to be with us for a very short uh, period of time, uh, why should they uh, feel left out of uh, the experience of Banasli? Which a lot of them even uh, couldn't do when they were uh, trying to get into their engineering or other courses. So the experiences are all going to be available for them. And uh, whatever they could do would be available to them uh, free, of, uh, free of cost free of any uh, charges and uh, their uh, learning would be uh, complemented with the uh, with the holistic education and the activities, the five-fold model that we have in our education system. And uh, looking beyond, soon we are going to be coming up with uh, programs dedicated uh, for industry executives. So we are going to have uh, curated programs to cater the needs of uh, uh, industry executives in uh, need of upskilling. So that uh, is another add-on that we're going to have in, uh, in the time to come. Okay. That's really interesting to know. It's like the vision which you have for this program. And uh, it's nice to also know that the girls are going to get, uh, you know, the entire campus uh, and experience and facilities, as you just told us. Uh, Sudhakar, would you want to add something to this? Yeah, I, I think one of the um, very critical part of this entire program, um, as I told you, it's going to be hands-on and uh, practical uh, focused, correct? And that's where uh, we believe, I think, uh, there's a huge opportunity for um, industries to collaborate in uh, for best at Banastali. Uh, as I told you, it's a CSR initiative of Bajaj. Uh, what it means is it is not meant for Bajaj hiring. It is primarily to support uh, the students from a um, economically weaker section to come get upskilled here and get employment. Uh, so we are inviting large number of industries, both in automotive and as well as other manufacturing uh, sectors to join hands with us and collaborate for um, making sure that the students get benefited. There are four ways they could potentially collaborate. Uh, the first one is, uh, since it's a hands-on training, we would like to create large number of projects becoming part of the you know uh, program delivery itself. Uh, so they, they, can, they can define projects based on their real life situations in their uh, you know factories. The second one uh, is guest lectures. I think Bringing to bring uh, bring both academia and industry together, uh, the best way to really uh, drive the change is to bring industry experts into the academia and or into the classroom and make them uh, directly connect with the students. So there are series of guest lectures which we have planned, and industries could potentially help us uh, send their executives. The third one is industry exposure visits as part of the program. 
the the Banasiri students are also going to be taken to uh, multiple uh, industries to really see how it works. Although the infrastructure which we have set up and the labs which we have set up are actually going to give industry experience because these are all industry level equipment. But still, I think few exposure visits to industry will also help them really correlate what they've learned in these labs versus you know what happens in the mm. uh, industry. And then finally, the you know placements. Because all of this is actually will only be successful when we are able to provide, uh, you know, sustainable livelihood for uh, these students, and for that, and industry is craving for skilled workforce. Right. Since we are solving this, and I'm sure there would be large number of industries would be in queue to pick up uh, these students, and uh, we would love to see as many students as possible get multiple offers, not just one offer um, yeah. after they complete the best course. So that's what we are looking forward. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. so this scope for partnership is also another angle. I think it should be interesting to people who would want to extend uh, you know, any collaborative kind of an initiative and work closely with you. Uh, like you mentioned, there are these four areas where other industries can also partner. And I think overall, the way I understood uh, listening to both of you now is this is also a very important big step in making education equitable, as we call it, right? So today it's all about uh, making it equitable and giving opportunities to people to uh, grow in whatever they can uh, excel and do well. So I'm sure this is going to be uh, very helpful to many girls. Uh, who want to build a career in an industry which is still very unconventional but actually with co courses like this i'm sure this is going to be quite conventional in the coming years so thank you so much both of you for sharing your uh, views and also the entire story about uh, you know the best programs and how it was launched and uh, what is the desired impact you are looking at in the coming months uh, i wish you all the best on behalf of team nsn Thank you. Thank you, Madhuri. Thank you, Dr. Anshuman. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.